grandma's button box. Kelly and her cousins were visiting grandma. One morning, Kelly woke up to a very quiet house. Her three cousins were asleep. Grandma was taking a walk. Kelly ate breakfast by herself and wondered what to do. What can I do that won't wake everyone up, she thought. Television's too loud, piano's too loud, even shooting baskets is too loud. Then, while Kelly was getting dressed, she heard a tiny ping. A button had popped off her shirt. That's it, she thought. Grandma's button box. Grandma had the coolest buttons. Even the plain ones seemed special, because Grandma told stories about them. There were pearl buttons from Grandma's wedding dress, and train buttons from Kelly's baby sweater. There was a soft furry button and a fancy gold one with big jewels on it. Kelly hadn't played with the button box all summer. It's, perf it's the perfect quiet thing to do, she thought. The button box was on a high shelf next to Grandma's sewing table. Kelly had to stand on a stool to reach it. She reached up as high as she could. Grandma's button box wobbled. The top snapped open. Buttons flew everywhere. Crash! The box hit the floor. Timmy and Brendan came running down the hall. What happened? asked Brendan. Then he saw the buttons. Uh-oh, he said. You're in trouble now, said Timmy. You guys have to help me, said Kelly. I'll never find all of the buttons by myself. Sure, said Brendan. If you take me bowling, said Timmy. Deal, said Kelly. Everyone started searching. Look, here's one in the flower pot, said Brendan. Here's one in Grandma's slippers, shouted Timmy. Kelly crawled into the closet. There's a bunch of them in here, she yelled. Wow, said Timmy. I found six under the rug. Soon all the buttons were in a big pile. What a mess, said Timmy. I'll put them back in the box. Wait, said Kelly. We have to put them back in their right compartments. How did Grandma have them sorted, asked Brendan. By size, shape, color? I can't remember, said Kelly. Uh-oh, said Brendan. You're in big trouble now, said Timmy. Maybe they were sorted by shape, said Kelly. Let's try it, said Brendan. Timmy picked out all of the round buttons. Brendan found some square ones and a few that were shaped like triangles and diamonds. Kelly started to pick out everything else. She found star shapes, ducks, boats, and cowboy boots. There was an umbrella, two apples, an elephant, and a pineapple. How do I sort these, she asked. You've got me, said Brendan. How about sorting them by size, said Kelly. You mean we have to do it again, said Timmy. After a while, they had seven piles of buttons. Let's see, said Kelly. We've got teeny, small, medium, large, extra large, jumbo, and humongous. Kelly sighed. This isn't right either. There are twelve compartments, said Brendan, and only seven sizes. I give up, yelled Timmy. What's all the shouting about, asked Sarah, Kelly's oldest cousin. Kelly spilled Grandma's buttons, and now they're all mixed up, Timmy said. We tried sorting them by shape, said Kelly, but that didn't work, said Timmy. We tried sorting them by size, said Brendan, and that didn't work either, said Timmy. Sarah looked at the buttons. There must be another way, she said. What about sorting them by color, said Kelly. Exactly, Sarah said. Sarah and Kelly picked out the buttons that were white, pink, purple, yellow, orange, and brown. Brendan and Timmy picked out the buttons that were red, blue, green, silver, gold, and black. We've got twelve colors, said Kelly. A color for every compartment, Brendan said. Perfect. Finally, said Timmy. Hi, kids, called Grandma a few minutes later. I'm home. We're in the sewing room, called Sarah.
Oh, my goodness, said Grandma. You sorted my buttons. Kelly spilled them, Timmy said, but we found them all. We put them back by color, said Kelly. That's the way you had them, isn't it? No, said Grandma. It isn't. You're in gigantic trouble now, Timmy said to Kelly. Grandma laughed. I never sorted them, honey bunny, she told Kelly. They were always jumbled together. All that trouble for nothing, said Timmy. It wasn't for nothing, said Grandma. She took off her sweater. See these safety pins? I never bothered to look for new buttons because it always took so long to find anything in that button box. Let's look for some new buttons now, Kelly said. It won't take long at all. How about this one, asked Timmy. Wrong color, said Brendan. I like this one. Wrong size, said Kelly. How about these? They're almost perfect. Kelly was right. The buttons looked great on Grandma's sweater. I think I'll keep my buttons sorted from now on, she said. And she did. The end. The Button Box My grandma has a special box. I like to play with what's inside. I swirl the buttons round and round, and then I pick the ones I like. Ten have flowers painted on them, just like grandma's china dishes. I like to sort them first. Next, I look for sparkly buttons. I pretend they're jewels that once belonged to kings and queens and movie stars. Some buttons are covered with cloth, satin, velvet, or corduroy. They make me think of fancy clothes. There are metal buttons from overalls and jeans, leather ones from cowboy shirts and sweaters. This looks like this looks like one from Grandpa's winter coat. Grandma says these small ones come from shoes worn long ago. Next, I sort the shiny buttons that come from uniforms. I line them up like marchers in a big parade. The one with the eagle I call Mr. President. I pull out all the pearly ones and make a rainbow pattern. When does little change to big? I can never tell. Some buttons have four holes, some two. Some don't have any sewing holes. They have shanks instead. These make good eyes on puppets and stuffed animals. Sometimes when Grandma sorts with me, we play a special game. We stir the buttons, shut our eyes, and then we each take one. Grandma asks, are they alike? Mine is wooden, so is hers. Both are round and flat. But hers is more thick, and mine is more thin. She puts my button on a string. Whirl it around, she says. The string twists up. I pull the ends. We listen to it hum. Grandma tells me what some buttons used to be. Some were seashells, some were even sand. Big furnaces heat the sand until it melts. When it cools, it's glass. When buttons come from trees. Deer shed their antlers every winter and grow new ones in the spring. I like the buttons made from their old horns. When it's time to put the buttons back, I pretend I'm very rich, counting all my gold. I like to feel the buttons then, the bumpy and the smooth. I like the way they sound, clickety-tappity, falling through my fingers, one by one, into the box. Then Grandma puts the box away where it will wait until next time. I wonder who first figured buttons out. The end.
corduroy. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day he waited with all of the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then, one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the buttons to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his... shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds this must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But, like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until, pop, off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator.
Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. And set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning, and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? the sales lady asked. Oh, no thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end.